some of the things that we're doing to build community, an example of that would be Meditation Mondays. We're allowing people who had already were leading programs at the school to continue those virtually. Um, we started our first week of distance learning on that Friday, we did a happy hour. And I left, you know, halfway through the happy hour, I was tired and exhausted. And on Monday, one of our administrators said, hey, you know, I did a poll at the end of the happy hour and 11 out of the 12 people that stuck around all live at home alone. And it was just this moment for me of, whoa, I myself was seeing all of these opportunities come up like yoga and happy hour and the breakfast club at 7.45 a.m. And I was like, those are cool, but I can't do any more. But I was forgetting that like, it's not always about me. Um, there are other individuals who are experiencing this in very different ways. And I have a dog, I've got a partner. I'm, you know, I, it's very different for me than to be in my house alone. And so for us to keep those community building opportunities like Meditation Mondays, yoga, um, and happy hour going, it allows for those individuals who don't have quick access to others to still be in community. And the Breakfast Club, just so you know, it's a group of us that every morning before school would just meet in the cafeteria and eat breakfast. Um, and so now there's a Zoom every day on our calendar that says Breakfast Club and anybody in the school can just click on it and join a Zoom um, breakfast group. And the last thing I'll share from community is that we kept our affinity groups going. So our school does a, a faculty and staff um, affinity group for people of color. And we are trying to host that at least maybe once a month or, or, or once every other week while we are out. And last but not least, it's the empower piece. Um, and the empower piece for me is just making sure that there is, if there's an opportunity that someone wants to lead, that they feel empowered to do so. So yoga, for example, meditation Mondays, those are all things that people led on the campus and we want to empower them to like continue to lead those. But the Onward Book Club, for example, is a new faculty member who just joined us in August said, wow, this book is really powerful. I'd love to connect with people um, and talk about it. And so we said, great, fantastic. And so he's continuing that while we're on distance learning. And the last thing I'll share is our breakout groups. For our very first faculty meeting, we um, provided space during the actual virtual faculty meeting for people to break out into groups based off of a topic they wanted to talk about. And those breakout groups range from things that were academically focused to personal. Um, some examples were, you know, how to creatively teach my class virtually. Others were navigating living alone during social distancing. Um, one was parenting young kids. The other was parenting teens. <laughs> Um, the, we had one where it was people who wanted to talk about how to navigate families who are far away from each other right now. Um, and then there were, I forget one of the other ones, but it really was a range. And so we gave them 15 minutes to just be in those breakout groups. Overwhelmingly, what we heard from people is that wasn't enough time and I want to get back together with my group. And so what we did is create a spreadsheet for them and we listed all of the breakout groups on that spreadsheet. And we had people put their email addresses under the breakout groups that they were interested in joining. And so now feel empowered to go and copy and paste those names and send them an email and say, hey, everyone that wants to nap, that, you know, that's navigating living alone right now, do you want to get together on Zoom? Do you want to hang out? And you don't have to wait for us to schedule that in a meeting. Are there any questions that people have about any of the things that I've shared? I'm going to try to expand my view. Question. This is, I mean, Tanisha, it's good stuff. It's great stuff. Um, how did, so did the breakout groups, was that happening like brick and mortar or that just came out of the social distancing? The breakout groups were new. Yeah. Okay. Breakout groups okay. were completely new, right? Some of the stuff was happening when we were brick and mortar. And so we kind of changed it to virtual. The breakout groups were completely new. It was, we were, looking at what we needed to talk about during that first faculty meeting and I was like we can't we can't just jump into content <laughs> um we need to give people time to you know just connect and, and to talk about what they're going through because it would it would have been our first time connecting as a full group since we had gone online um and so 
Yeah, it was, it was kind of done similar to the way that this conference is done. I had people tell me what groups they wanted to go to. And then in the faculty meeting, I split them off into the groups and gave them 15 minutes and then pulled them back afterwards and we wrapped up. All right, so what I'd like to do next then is to give you all a little bit of brainstorming time. Because again, like I said, I, expertise doesn't just lie in one area here. Um, so I want to give you all an opportunity to think about what this would look like or what these categories, maybe one of these categories would look like in your community. Thinking about the needs of your community, whether it be the emotional needs, the actual like core basic needs for life, um, the need for community building or feeling of empowerment. What could programming look like? I've shared some ideas, but I know that there could be others, especially thinking about your specific community. Um, I'd love to give you all three to five minutes to do some brainstorming on your own. And I'm gonna play a little music. And since I can't break you out or <laughs> cause we're already in a breakout room, then I'll stop the music. And I'd like us to come back and share out with each other. Um, so when you hear the music stop, then come on back. But for now, here's a little Herbie Hancock. So I saw some messages from Eric and Valerie in the chat that I'm going to uh, illuminate. So thank you all for sharing those. And hopefully everybody else is back with us. All right. Um, so Eric and Valerie, if you didn't see in the chat, shared some really cool ideas that either schools are doing and then also some things that they're thinking about. Um, so just to share those aloud and then Eric and Valerie, feel free to uh, add to them if you want. Um, but some of the things that were put out is uh, providing therapists to come to the school to hold space for teachers. And that's, you know, what I like about this idea is it's the school proactively doing something, saying here, here they are, not, oh, you know, we have those benefits, you can call it, which I think right now is what we're doing. So what would happen if there were even right now, virtual office hours, or, you know, office hours where people could tap in. Because um, secondary trauma is real. Yes, Eric, you want to say more about that? No, like it, doing it for the last five years, right? Oh. So it's the same therapist. Um, she is from EAP. Um, I'm principal of an alternative school. So when <laughs> students begin sharing their stories and their trauma, that's, there's an impact. And so I think, what I found though is, and why I've had Karen come back, is one, they like her and they connect with her, but it's hard for folk to really call into EAP. Yes. Because um, if, if you've never done it before, um, it's like a cold call. So they really have to ask you like very probing questions. Yeah. So they get you to the right person, which, which this, this was not relationship before task. That's all task. And so um some folk get off it's off putting to folk and i'm gonna shut up after this but seriously having that relationship first and just holding space eap is not part of the school I, nothing gets shared with me unless there's self-harm or harm to others but it's just it provides like a space for teachers to um address some things that they're that they're dealing with and that's between them and the counselor and eric have you been able to still do that uh virtually it no it's okay. um be, because the governor here in colorado declared all the therapists as essential oh. um and they were pulling people on sidelines to provide wow. so if you, some of those folks were literally deployed out okay, okay. Help, like healthcare workers health professionals yeah um and the like so all the sessions are you you can still get offered but you still have to call in yes i couldn't reserve karen's time like that no, for sure. But right. I, I, again, it's one that, you know, when we think about what it's going to take to move us back into community with one another, um, when all of this is, you know, when hopefully there's some healing that is happening and some cures available, um, we need to be thinking about the care that our adults are going to need. Um, I think, Karen, you might have said that uh, we have to take care of our adults. 
because we can't just expect them. We have to model the putting the, put your oxygen mask on first before you put it on the child. We can't have our adults out here without any oxygen and, and hoping that they're caring for our kids well. So I appreciate you lifting that up. It's something that we should be thinking about, not just like what can we do virtually, but what will our school need to function when we're back in that building? Um, and then they're doing happy minutes on Fridays and there's uh, trivia and music with prizes. So just so you all know, I'm actually in the fall going to be going to a, a school in Virginia. I'm going to be heading home to Virginia. And they did a bingo Friday happy hour yesterday, a virtual bingo. And I joined in on it. And it was fun. It was just, you know, something lighthearted. So that's great. All right, then let me scroll down a little bit. We've got uh, Valerie saying that one of her teachers revived their faculty association and now connects newsletters and photos, videos. Yes. I love that. Valerie, did you want to say more about that? It was, it's, uh, we had a faculty association that kind of died out last year. And right before, a teacher actually took the incentive and started pulling it back together. We started, um, uh, she had a couple, like a Valentine's Day thing. And then, of course, we went out. So she's, she really uh, took it up. And now, yeah, we're connecting regularly. I really appreciate what she's doing. But just to see that, you know, she sends something out and uh, it, it's really important to connect. Yeah, yeah so, no, I would agree. And and I, I think it was a, <laughs> with that. Well, you miss everybody. You miss senior you teachers. Do. You miss as long as your students too, but you miss yeah. your teachers. Yes. I, so two things about that. One is someone, um, I think it was King Say, you said, we're having trivia night and happy hour. It seems small, but it means a lot. It absolutely means a lot, right? Sometimes the smallest things mean so much because we don't know how it's landing for people on the other end. We don't know what people's experiences are like when we close that computer and zoom down. Um, so absolutely those small things mean a lot. But the other piece is, I mean, those the video messages and the pictures, they keep us connecting. Everyone can't do a written newsletter. <laughs> So, you know, my head of school, he sends and he tries to keep them short, these paragraphs in our newsletters to keep people going. But I, you know, we're encouraging people now, like do a video message. Let's, you know, try to connect with people in different ways. But um, one of the most powerful things I thought about is I've met with adults every day since we've been on distance learning. I haven't met with any students. Right. And so I forget about those interactions that I normally would have had. But now I don't have unless they're scheduled. Um, and so our uh, assistants and our front desk clerk, she was in tears last week because she was just saying like, I, I don't see, she sits at that front desk every day for multiple hours, welcomes people in. And now she has zero, she's not in any Zoom meetings, you know? And so those community connection points for her are her world. Breakfast club seems so small to people. She's there 7.45 every morning just to be able to have that connection with folks. Yeah, so, so the small things definitely do mean a lot. Um, thank you all for sharing those. Are, are there other folks who had ideas that they want to share out as well? Okay. All right, just wanted to make sure. Um, so in the interest of time, what I did is in that folder that the, um, that the conference shared with you, is this actual, is this slideshow, but I also put a worksheet so that if you wanted to kind of take some time and fill in for yourself, like, well, okay, let me think about something in each of these buckets, you could. But the other thing is I also then broke it down a little bit, choose one idea, just one. And what would it look like for you to really do it? Who could you partner with? Because sustainability is the key. <laughs> like, I have found that some of the things that I could do like nothing in person, really it's taking me a lot to do them virtually. So who can I partner with to do it to want to make sure there's a little bit of accountability for me and that it can get done and I have the bandwidth? What is it that we're gonna do? Um, when could it actually take place? Our schedule is different now. So people that I used to be able to connect with during the day, I now have to connect with at four or five because our daytime schedule is all out of whack. What platform could you use? And why would this be useful for your community? And then how could you plan ahead for any challenges? So some of the things that I have to think about now when I'm planning is, oh, I can't just say this is at lunchtime because our teachers who might teach before and after lunch, they don't have that same level of, of ease going into class. So I need to offer some things happening after school. 
when I talk to the teachers who have young kids at home who are also trying to parent them through schooling, their daytime schedule looks very different. Um, I had a friend the other day, our high school actually tried to do a little mini class reunion on Zoom. And she said the best time would be 10 o'clock at night. And I was like, what? <laughs> but it was true. She said 10 o'clock, my kids have gone to bed and I can be fully yours. And so we scheduled it for 10 o'clock. <laughs> We're just like, why not? Um, you know, but just thinking about the fact that our lives look so different now that everything is taking place in one point. And so how could you plan ahead for what some of those challenges might be for people, really looking at what their schedule looks like compared to people who um, may not have the same responsibilities. So that worksheet is in the folder for you. Um, so you can access that on your own, not just through the slides, but you can you know, either print it or just look at it online and jot down notes. And one of the th last things I wanted to leave you all with was a quote, well, not a quote, but this is um, taken from the April chapter of Elena Aguilar's um, book. Spheres of influence are not hers, you know, but she highlighted them in this chapter to just remind us that when we're talking about riding the waves of change, we got to do so in a way that also, you know, keeps us going. And sometimes that's being able to really sit back and say, what's in my sphere of influence? You know, am I the principal of a school where I might have a lot more control than others? Am I in a position to be able to influence folks who can get something on the calendar or say, hey, think about that Friday bingo idea? Or I'm in, am I in a place of complete control where I can say, I'm putting that on the calendar myself. I think this would be great. Like that teacher that Valerie mentioned who said, I'm starting the association back up. I'm starting the newspaper. And then being able to really recognize like what is outside of our influence? You know, what are, what are some of the ideas that would be fantastic and great, but right now we're outside of our influence and not letting that be the only thing that we focus on, but inching back towards those inner circles of like, well, what can I influence and what can I control myself? Um, what are some of those things that I myself can, can try to bring forward to my community? Um, so I think we have one minute before we might get pulled back into <laughs> the main session by Kayla. So I wanted to maybe try to give an opportunity if anyone wants to share maybe one action that they'll take after um, talking about or thinking about some of the things that we touched on during today's session. We can do it popcorn style. So if you wanna just unmute yourself and share one action that you take. Well, we uh, in, the, in the PE department have been doing um, a lot more Zoom meetings. It seems like we spend more time now talking to each other than we did when we were on campus. Ah. As far as, uh, some of us, the, the 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 male the P department with the female P department. So there's four of us, and we we have been doing quite a bit of Zoom meetings, not just for department purposes, but also just to stay in touch and just check on each other as to how everybody's doing. So Good. there has been an increase in that. Building in the time, yeah. And Diana, I'm part of the uh, staff senate at Loyola Marymount University. We're doing a lot of stuff for faculty and, and, and the students, but nothing for the staff. And we canceled our staff appreciation week. So I'm thinking right now that we should actually put it back together and yeah. have that staff appreciation week throughout the week on Zoom and planning many different activities like the ones that I've been having ideas from here. That's from. great. That's great. Yeah. Take care of your adults. Take care of all of them. Like, and the ones who, again, who aren't doing some of that direct instruction, they are missing people the most because they are having yes. interaction, right? So that's great. That's great. Wonderful ideas. Good. Well, listen, I also want you all to be able to keep in touch. So if you want to keep in touch, feel free. I put my information on the screen. I'm happy to share any thing that I can with you all, um, any resources that come up after the fact, if you say, wait, how do you run that program or how are you doing that? Just send me an email. I'm happy to be of assistance. I guess that's the word I'm looking for. Cool. Anybody else want to share? We're going to get pulled back in 13 seconds. So thank you. Time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you all. Mm -hmm.